Hello and welcome to tonight's Bastion and broadcast where we are going to be playing some Grimlight. Um, we're going to get straight into it today because there's lots that I need to uh, to ramble on about but I can do that while we are playing. So I'm playing this obviously in Tabletop Simulator but if you're unfamiliar with Grimlight the elevator pitch is I wanted to make a ultra light miniatures game that uses just a few miniatures on each side and basically seeing how how light can I make the rules and have it still work as a kind of miniatures game um, and then it's kind of evolved a lot over the last kind of six months and in the last week or so I've been making some pretty big changes to it and sort of mainly to do with not so much with the game itself but mainly with the sort of the scenarios and the campaign and how how the actual structure of play works so we're going to be testing that out tonight. So I am going to be talking as if you've never seen me play Grimlight before because I've not done this in a while. Um, but as you can see, this is our board. It's a, a warband level game. So like I say, we, we, you're talking like for a new warband, you have like a leader and they might have three to five, like, or maybe six like followers. But yeah, smaller sort of scale than like your Frostgrave um, Necromunda sort of things. Um, Razagan has sent me a name. So we have uh, Daruska, which I will be giving to my chronicle over here. Um, but I will be going over the um, going over the scenario mainly today, because, like I said, the, the rules I think they're pretty solid for like how moving, shooting, um, not dying, how all that works. That all seems pretty solid. So instead, the main thing that's changed in kind of recent uh, versions, it used to be that a scenario is split into two halves. You had like a mission half, which was like your objective and what the two warbands were trying to do. And then you had your scene, which was like the environment you were fighting in and had like random events to do with the, the environment and the battlefield that you're on and maybe like a special rule for that battlefield. The problem was I made them a little bit too involved because one of my goals with this was to have, if you have the, sim the system, if you make the system really simple, then my theory was you can make the scenarios and um, things like that kind of bonkers. And you can, but having sort of two, two bonkers halves that you try and fit together, it gets a bit fiddly and you're having to look back and forth between pages. So the way it works now is we still have our scene half. I'm aware that this is terrible um, resolution, but this is kind of how it shows up in tabletop sim. So don't worry about the fine details. All you need to know is like the scene now tells you a little bit about the battlefield, but it's much more stripped back. This is like a sort of secondary half of the scenario. The main thing that's going to define the scenario that you're playing now is the horror. So the horrors are they've always been a part of the game for for quite early on horrors were a thing and they're like big neutral horrible monsters that stomp around and in some previous missions you were trying to hunt them in some you were just trying to do something else and try and like avoid the horror while you were doing it but now the focus is firmly on killing the horror but i've made that more difficult because you can't just shoot the horror to death um, you have to destroy its three nexuses. Now, I hate the word nexus, but I, I don't yet have a better word for these things. So, depending on what the horror is, they might represent different things. But for this horror, so our horror is the steel tyrant. These are like shield generator, sort of shield and power generators that we need to destroy before we can destroy the steel tyrant. And the horrors now are much tougher to kill. They're much more involved. So... At the end of each round, the horror is going to do something weird. And as we destroy these nexuses, it's going to trigger effects. So we'll, we'll, we'll cross, cross the bridge as we go. But basically, there's a lot more specialized behavior now baked into these horrors. They're not quite as... Well, they're much, much less generic. They're kind of like... They, they all break the rules in their own way. So in the kind of basic scenario, the basic horror that you might fight, the... the nexuses would normally be like scattered around the board so you've got to go and destroy them and then take on the horror but in this case the steel tyrant actually carries 
the Nexus is around with him and he weaponizes them. So at the end of each turn, he's going to use one of them to do something. He might be as simple as he might throw it at you. He might crush it and throw it to the ground and take an extra turn. There's all sorts of things he's going to do. But basically, we have to wait until he uses these Nexuses before we can destroy them. He also has a few minions, which are these enforcers, which are just kind of shooty guys. Um, they can just be killed as normal. And there's no reward for getting them. They're just like an added obstacle. Um, and I've deliberately chosen... So this is just... I've chosen this horror because this, this is one that I've not yet play tested, And I'm interested to see how they work with their kind of... He's got like a lightning cannon and he... Like I say, he throws these nexuses around, so it could, should be interesting. Um, for the scene half, I've chosen Beacon. Now, I've played it quite safe with the ones that I've playtested before, and I've not tried out the weirder ones. But I decided to try one of the one of the scenes that is... The scenes are much simpler than they were previously. It's much more about the setup now. You kind of... You reference this during setup, and then you probably don't need to look at it during the game. But this one... Um, so we're essentially we're fighting in darkness and there's a beacon at the center of the board now that is this tower up here and if we can get to the top of this tower and we have only our units at the top of the tower then we can light the beacon which means we achieve our secondary objective our primary objective being to kill the horror so normally there will be two warbands sort of competing over this but we're playing solo, so there's a few there's a few extra sort of minions up here guarding it. Um, but they won't be leaving the beacon, they're just protecting it. Now, until that beacon is lit, we are technically fighting in darkness. So the one special rule from the scene is that uh, units can only shoot at the nearest visible enemy. So if I had one of my units here, he could only shoot at this unit he couldn't shoot at this one over here because it's so dark that you can only really see the nearest target. Now, let's look at our warband. So, uh, we've got a selection of uh, miniatures here from uh, at least two different ranges, I think. But um, the goal with Grimlight was always that I wanted to be able to use whichever miniatures I cobbled together. So there's like a mix of like medieval and sci-fi kind of stuff going on in the setting. Um, I can see a few more names popping up, so we're going to be using them as we go. Um, so our leader is a judge. And I won't go over the details of every single character, but the main thing you need to know is that every character is def every unit is defined by a quality score. So our leader will always have 3+. plus. That means whenever they try and do anything, they're trying to roll 3+, plus on a d6. And that's it. Um, he has a hammer, and he can do a special thing at the end of his turn, which we'll, we'll get to uh, when we can do it. He doesn't have a name, so he can be uh, Judge... Um, I'm going to use Darth Omega's name there, so I'm going to use Beric's. Judge Beric's. Um, so he's our leader. Then we have a couple of um, quality 4 plus units. So we have a paragon here who is tough and has a, a gun that's better when you fire it from standing still. And he has a special ability where he's good at, he's better at attacking units that are touching one of his allies. So he's going to be like watching over the rest of the group. Uh, he can be Mr. Smile because that's a good kind of I don't know if he is a robot. I don't see why not. With a lot of these, like, the concepts for, like, these warbands, so th this, this type of warband, there's, like, four different factions, and these are the inheritors. It's deliberately kind of left open enough that you can model them how you want, and that, that's very much part of the design. So then we have this guy, who is our champion. So he just has a spear, and he's going to be good at fighting up close. Uh, he can be Sefi. So thank you to Sapi for that name. And then I've got I've got two unnamed people. Don't make me come up with names because it's a uh, it's not a good time. 
So Burke we've already had. So he's our freelance. So he's tough and he's got a crossbow. We have a zealot. Yet unnamed. I mean he can just be zealot for now. We'll, we'll, we'll give him a name when he's earned one. And then we have a chronicle who is kind of useless in some ways and i wanted to have it's, it's easy to make mechanics for someone that's like oh this guy has a big gun or this is you know she's got a sword and she runs in and stabs you or this is a robot and they're really tough like it's easy to make mechanics for that but it's trickier to have mechanics for kind of like i wanted to have the possibility for like non-combatants which sounds silly for a game like this but I like the idea of like this is like your retinue. So you might have like an advisor or something with you who isn't necessarily there to just like kill things. And I've never quite managed to get these mechanics to work very well with this system because two of the big goals that I have with this system is no stacking and no tracking. So there's no stacking in the sense that there's no stacking bonuses. So you don't get like a plus one from this and a plus one from this and a minus one from this and then total them all together every single type of roll is only ever subject to one modifier so if you're shooting someone it's minus one if they're in cover and that's it there's no other modifiers to think about um and no tracking means that um there's no effects that last beyond the end of your turn so your activation so once it, when you activate a unit anything that happens once you've let go of that unit and moved on you don't need to remember it all you need to remember is whether they're standing up, knocked down, or dead. Um, so it's tricky to do things like buff effects because you can't say, oh, well, you know, your leader gets plus one when you're next to them. So instead, at the moment, this chronicle will give our leader a free action at the end of their turn if they can see the leader. So they kind of just want to follow the leader around. Uh, Darth Omega has come in with a name. We've got Corvus. I think that's that's a good one for this this zealot here. And I think that is everyone is named. We're good. So, um, oh, the, the one thing I didn't say, these, these guys are at the top of the, that are guarding the beacon up here. Um, that they're not especially dangerous. They've just got a dagger and they're not going to chase you. That they'll only, they'll only leave the beacon if they can see you so they're not going to chase you all over the map but they are nimble so nimble means they're harder to shoot and that they're quick when they move and they're harder to shoot so we're going to want to go and get stuck in and kill them up close um the other thing i should add because you might be thinking how am i going to get up here um for the purposes of this scenario i'm sort of assuming that this is climbable i for, for this game kind of assumes that services are climbable but I'm going to assume that there are like handholds all around here. So if you're stood here, you can use a move to get to the top. I'm, I'm limited by what I can have on a tabletop sim here. So that's it really. And you, you know, you, uh, you activate a unit from your warband and then you activate an unbound unit, which is any of these and you can choose which one. And then you just go back and forth until everyone's had a go. And then it's the end of the round. Um, the one thing I should have said is we're actually playing this solo. So there's no other warband, but typically there would be another warband competing with you on this. So normally with this, I just dive straight in, but I am going to strategize <laughs> very slightly. Um, so this horror is horrible. And at the moment we can't, we can't kill them. We could knock them down, which would normally, you know, prevent them from potentially prevent them from doing anything too bad. But this particular horror can attack as normal when they're down and their weapon they fire a shot and it's like a chain lightning so if it hits if it wounds one of my units it will like leap to the next unit that it can see so that's that's kind of nasty we don't want to be involved with that um the other twist we have with this deployment is rather than deploying from a table edge we can deploy anywhere that's out of sight because remember we're in darkness here so Hmm, but the first one's always tough. Here's what I'm thinking. 
Mr. Smile here, our Paragon, they are tough, which means they are better at getting back up if they do get knocked down. Um, so I think we're going to deploy them to start with, because if they do get in trouble, they're quite likely to be able to survive. I'm thinking it would be good to get rid of these minions, because re remember, we can't we can't do anything to these Nexuses yet, because the Tyrant's like holding them. So we, we do just have to weather the storm with this guy. But we can get rid of some of these enforcers to make our life a bit easier. So what I'm thinking is... Um, I need to deploy somewhere out of sight. Which is tricky with these. Funnily enough... No, that, that's a little bit close to the a little bit close to the horror for my liking. I think there's an argument that that is out of sight. If we imagine that he's actually here, I, I remember now using this map last time, and it's a bit of a nightmare with all these walkways. <laughs> but yeah, so when you deploy, you place them down, and that's 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 before your actions. So you get three actions um, on every turn. Um, yeah, he, he is just out of sight. We're, we're going to be generous with that. So, that's our deployment. Now, on your turn, you get three actions. Um, you can use any combination of actions between move, shoot, fight in hand-to-hand, -hand, um, or recover. If you're, if you're down, you need to recover to get back up before you can do anything else. Um, you can move as many times as you want, and there's no measuring so you move in a straight line now there's a whole section in the book well you know it's a paragraph in an a5 book it's not a huge section that gives you like guidelines on moving so generally a move is either a run in a straight line across open ground a hurdle to the other side of an obstacle a climb up a vertical level a drop down a level or a leap across a reasonable gap so here i would say like that that would be a move if you wanted to move to here or he could climb up to the top of this thing if, if it wasn't... Oh. Mm. No, that, that's kind of horrible. We don't want to do that. Um, so, yeah. So, you can move as far as you want, but um, you have to stop when you sort of hit an obstacle. So, obviously, this is a game about having lots and lots of dense terrain. Now, you can move... The first time you move, you don't need to roll or anything like that. But then if you want to move again with like your second or third action, you need to make a roll to be able to do that. You can shoot once per turn. You can fight in hand to hand up to twice per turn. And if you are down, you can attempt to recover like once per turn. So we're going to move with our first action. We're going to move to this very precarious ledge here already i'm like what am i doing this is ridiculous so i think he has line of sight um yeah i mean he has line of sight i feel like we're gonna have to give this guy cover um so there's a rule of thumb in here Um, when it comes to judgment calls and that is to be generous when like allowing people generous to say whether there is line of sight um but also be generous to the target when they're trying to work out if they've got cover or not so we're saying there is line of sight but he has got cover so mr smile is rolling um normally at four plus but it's going to be five plus because of the cover and his storm rifle is one times two which means it's one attack and if it hits, it's going to do two damage. So he needs to roll a five or six. One is not what I wanted to see. And then I'm going to try and move again. I'm going to try and move to there. And remember I said that each type of roll has one modifier. So with movement, the only modifier is if you can see your leader, you get plus one. But our leader isn't actually on the board yet. So he needs a four plus to successfully move. He doesn't, which means he stays put. And he's going to put his little exhaustion token down to show that he's exhausted. And he's now done for this turn. So he's actually in a bad place because he's now in clear line of sight of 
of this guy, which is a bit a bit of a pain. Um, but the good thing is we get to choose who to activate. Now. common thing that you might want to do is you might want to activate a unit that isn't really going to be able to do much at the moment because there's not many targets around um, but the horror does scare me slightly and I feel like the longer we leave it the worse it's going to be when they do activate so we're going to activate this horror straight away so your unbound units follow a certain chain of behavior if they can attack a target, they will. He hasn't got anyone he can attack because he can't see me, so he won't. If he can see, if he can't attack, then he'll move towards the nearest enemy he can see. And he can't see anyone. And then finally, if he can't see any enemies, um, the way I like to phrase it is he smells the enemies. In this case, I guess he's like scanning and sensing it. And he will move towards the nearest enemy, whether he can see them or not. So... He's in a bit of an awkward place here. So I guess he's going to be moving like over there is probably like strictly speaking the best place to be. And his nexuses are going to follow him. So that was his first move. And then again he's going to move towards me. So he's going to try and get He's in a bit of an awkward place to like line up a shot on me. So I think if I'm saying that he's moving towards me, you might think, yeah, he should go like in a straight line. But I think there's a degree of like common sense in this game. And I know that's a bit of a dirty word sometimes. But I'm going to say that he would try and like get line of sight on me. So he needs to roll a three plus to successfully move. Of course, like I can roll brilliantly when it's rolling for the horror. So d does he actually have line of sight on me? Now I've said that. Yeah, I mean, he's firing through that grate, but he will have line of sight. Let's put his, uh, bring his nexuses with him. Um, so he is going to shoot at me, unfortunately. So his weapon only has one shot and it's three plus to hit, but it's actually four plus because of the cover. But it doesn't matter because he rolled a five. So my Mr. Smile will be taking three damage. So when he takes damage, he has to roll. For each point of damage, he has to roll a save. So he's taken three damage. So he needs to get four plus on all of these to resist being wounded. It doesn't matter if he fails on one, two, or three. If he fails any of them, he's wounded. Um, and it's, it's, it's especially bad when he's on top of this thing. So we need to get a four, lots of four pluses. Oh, no. So one, which means he is wounded. So, when the target is wounded, you roll on a table that I'm very happy with, but I'm not happy with having to roll on it now, which is the shock table, to see what happens to them. Four. <laughs> so, four is an opportunity, which means the attacker will get a free, a free attack or a free move. However... It does just mean this guy is knocked down. Oh, no, let's not let's not go down there. So he's knocked down. Okay. Um, but because he's so close to the edge, he's going to need to roll to avoid falling down. So he needs to get a four plus. Thank you. So he's down. He didn't fall over there. But this guy gets a free attack or a free move. Now... It's been so long since I <laughs> have written like the core rules here that I've actually forgotten something. So I'm going to go back and see because I forget whether these free actions, I believe that it's written that they don't count towards your like maximum. So let's have a look. This is the problem when you go through so many revisions of a game, you start to forget like the basics here. Free actions granted in special situations do not count towards the normal action limit. So he can shoot again. Well, 
can he see me now because I'm down? I think he probably can. So he needs a, a, a four plus to hit. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad. So the horror has moved twice, shot, and he had a free action. So he's he's um, exhausted. So I know that Mr. Smile went down, but we knew that was we knew that was an option. So the good thing about this is the horror is now exhausted and they are out of the way. So they're over there. We don't need to worry about them for the rest of this turn until the e rest of this round. Sorry, until the end of the round when they are going to do something weird. Um, so it means we're kind of free to go after this lot. Now, I've played on this map before against someone else who shall remain nameless. And I've got PTSD about this spot because they put their leader here and just proceeded to snipe me for the entire game. So I'm thinking I'm going to do that. So who do I have who's a good shot? Not really many people. Burke is the only one that really... Other than Mr. Smile, Burke is the only other like ranged combatant here. So we're going to deploy Burke down here. I think they're out of sight there. Is that fair to say? Um, yeah, and in fact, we're not going to go up there. So we are going to deploy here. Oh, but we can only attack the nearest target, can't we? I was gonna, I was hoping to shoot at this guy because he's exposed over here. He hasn't got any cover. But this guy's closer, so we can't, we can't shoot at him until we light that beacon. We're a bit stuck. Um, I'm just looking for a good, a good way in. That's that's the that's the money right here. So this is our deployment spot because it's out of sight. And then we're going to move to here. Now, unfortunately, Burke is just a five plus uh, grunt, but I'm going to say that's not concealment. He needs a five plus to hit. No, okay, that's a fail. Um, and then I'm going to try and duck back into cover. So I'm going to need a five plus to to make that. No, it's it's not not going well but sometimes it's good to get all the bad walls out of your system now who do we activate I kind of want to activate someone that's not going to do much so this guy here I'm going to activate him so his nearest enemy has got to be Burke he can't see him but he can move towards him so I think he's gonna like duck through here with his move and then he's gonna shoot up at Burke. He's, Burke is like covered up to the waist. I think I'm gonna be generous and say that that's in cover. <laughs> so this enforcer is firing three times one weapon. So it's three shots and they need a six to hit because he's in cover. But these enforcers are precise so he gets to reroll any misses. So they all miss but he can re-roll them. Oh, bastard. So two, two hits. So two damage to Burke. And these flash guns that the enforcers have, uh, if I roll a one for any of my saves, you just go down without any further harm. So it's actually kind of a weakness. They're not very good at killing. They're just good at taking down. So he needs to roll five plus for his saves. He makes them both. Burke is not messing around. Um, so this guy has moved, he's shot, and then for his last action, he is evasive, so he won't willingly move to touch an enemy, but he will technically still move towards me. So I think he's going to try and get to there. So he needs to roll a 5+. plus. Okay. Slightly odd behavior for him there, but who am I to judge? Okay. Speaking of judge, let's bring on our leader. Right, let's think. How do I feel like we want our leader to get up here? 
But it's, it's a bit of a dangerous time to go up there because they haven't activated yet. Hmm. Right, I know what I'm doing. He's going to deploy here, which I believe is out of sight. Yeah, I mean, he's pretty much blocked there. And then it's going to take two moves to get to this guy, but he's going to try. So his first move, he's going to come down to here. This, this, this is the dangerous bit of the map that I was talking about. Okay. Oh, no, stop glitching. Right, that's fine. And then he's going to try and move into contact with the enforcer. So he needs a three plus. He makes it. And then he has one action left. He's going to make a swing for this guy with his hammer. So his hammer is one times two. So it's one attack for two damage. He needs a three plus to hit. That's not how it's done. So he misses with his one attack. And it's a shame because if his hammer hits, it's great. He's got like a special thing that it does. It's more likely to kill you. But you've got to actually hit for that to work, Judge. Come on. Now, we're going to activate one of these because at the moment, these will do kind of do nothing because they will only leave the beacon if they can see an enemy. And none of them can see an enemy yet. So it's kind of like a free free activation up here so we're going to activate we're going to activate this one and then because he can't see anyone ordinarily he would move towards the nearest target but he's got this special rule saying that they only leave if the enemy is visible so these are basically going to guard this area until we go up there so we activate him and he does nothing now Luckily, we have this Chronicle unit where if we end their turn and, our, and we can see our leader, our leader gets an extra action. Which means they could attack this enforcer again and hopefully actually hit them. Um, the other thing that is quite good to have extra units for is you can go and like you can help up an ally so if you move next to them you can spend an action to like have them recover and i would like to get mr smile back on his feet because i'm worried about when this guy starts to shoot ah it's a tough one you know what we're gonna we'll get mr smile up afterwards don't worry but for now, we're going to deploy. It's not going to deploy there. Is there a spot that's out of sight up here? Not really. We could deploy down here. It'd be good if we could get into contact with this guy because it would stop him shooting, which would be useful, even though we're ma massively exposing ourselves. And then we could still see our leader from there. Let's have a go. So our hidden spot is going to be, I guess, there. I think deploying there will be a little bit cheeky. So we're going to deploy there. Our first move takes us up a level. Our second move will take us into contact with this guy. But we need a 5+. plus. Ah, but... We can see our leader, so it's actually a four plus. Four plus feels so much better than five plus. I mean, I can still fail it. And then he's going to try again for his last action. Not going well. And then at the end of their turn, I can see the leader, so the leader gets another action. So he's going to have one more swing at this enforcer. So it's a three plus for him to hit. There you go. And then it's two damage. Uh, the enforcer has a save of five plus. So the damage gets through. 
So he's knocked down, but also we have this special brutal ability. So instead of rolling 2d6 for shock, we just roll 1d6 plus 1, which is good because a roll of 2 on the shock table is a kill shot. So this guy is messily taken out. Gone. I, I, I do like flicking them away, but they just kind of weirdly teleport back. So um, who knows where he's going to end up. There we go. Let's get rid of him. Right, we, we killed a minion. We're, we're not completely useless. Now, unfortunately, we're going to have to activate someone else. Uh, we're going to do another one of these guys because they're still going to chill out on top of there. Now, we're going to send someone in to get Mr. Smile. So, the good thing about like going and helping another ally recover is that it doesn't really matter what your score is because you th they still roll to try and get back up. All that matters is that you've gone to help them. So, Corvus, you're going to go in. So, he's going to start out of sight here. And then we're going to move him to here, just like we did with Mr. Smile. In fact, we might even put him in front of Mr. Smile. I know it's a bit of a, a bit of a loop, but we'll allow it. Um, and then he's going to help Mr. Smile up. So Mr. Smile will try and recover. So he would normally be rolling four plus. He gets plus one because an ally is touching him. And because he's tough, he can re-roll that. So it's essentially three plus with a re-roll. He's up. So Mr. Smile, back on his feet. Let's get that out from under your feet. Um, and then Corvus has one action left. I think we want to get him like up here to deal with these because these these are not very good. They're, they're very good at evading missile weapons. So we need to get someone up there to actually hit them. So he's going to try and move to there, which is a five plus. No, he doesn't make it. Okay, and then for our unbound unit, we'll activate this one here, who will guard the beacon. And then our final unit is Sefi here. So I'm just I'm just putting putting Sefi down there while I work out what's going on. So we don't really want to down the horror because it doesn't really do much at the moment. These are all now exhausted, so we could we could send. We could send Sefi up there, and in fact, that is what we're going to do. So Sefi's going to deploy here. With their one action, they're going to do a, a sprint up here. And when it comes to being in contact, I'm, I'm kind of, I always say like, you know, close enough is close enough. So we are in a position to strike this Shadow Stalker. So because Sefi is fierce, they're re-rolling their fight rolls so they need a four plus to hit and their spear is uh one times two i think so they need a four plus to hit with a reroll that's a hit the enemy is saving on a five plus nope they're wounded let's see what the shock roll is it's a five ah which means thrown so they go down and we move them directly away from us. So we will obviously drop them in the drink. So a fall like that um, is D6 damage. Six damage. So this, this, this thing is dead. But we'll, unless it can roll five plus on all these saves. It can't. So that is one dead Shadow Stalker. So we're getting there towards the end of the round. We pulled out some stuff. Um, and then Sefi actually has one action left. He's going to try and move over to this one. So he's got, he needs a four plus to make it. Yeah, good stuff. So we'll put him there. We know that he's in contact. Right, good work, Sefi. Um, so that's all our units, but there's a few enemies left, I think. Um, just the one, actually. 
So yeah, this enforcer has gone. This one's dead, and it's just this one here. So we did say this was line of sight. So this enforcer has got like a point blank shot in our chronicle here. So three shots, five plus to hit, but they are precise so they can reroll their misses. So it's one hit. Our chronicle has saved a five plus, but it's not good enough. Um, let's see what the shock roll is. Eight. Fight back. Free attack on your attacker. Well, no, I can't because I don't have a gun. <laughs> So Druskit is down. Yeah, why not? Let's let's say they fall down there. Um the enforcer isn't gonna move into contact because they, they won't, so that they're actually not gonna do anything else because all they do is shoot. So that's everyone is now exhausted, which means it's the end of the round. Which means let's get a big die for this. We're gonna roll an event for the horror to see what they do that that was you saw that there we go I, I, I like a roll where you at least get to flip the dice around a lot so number six the tyrant throws the nexus to the center of a random quarter of the board any enemies inside that quarter take d6 damage from the electrical storm so i i considered this before and i think we're actually we're okay because we haven't got I mean, we've got two in this quarter, one in this quarter, um, and then we'll, we'll have to judge that as we get to it. So, for the purposes of this um, rule, I'm saying that, oh, that's the wrong button. I'm saying that this is one half of the board. No, you know what, let's let's do it properly. So, how, how wide is the board? So yeah, 50. So measure it 25. So yeah, it is, it's just where this little line is. So this is one half of the board. And yeah, just over 50 again. So we'll roll and we'll say it's like one, two, three, four. And we'll re-roll if we get a five or six. One. So it's this corner up here. So by my measurements there, oh, it's very hard to judge with a uh, Cephi. I mean, I think if we're judging this at the center of the board, they are in this corner down here. So I think this storm will only affect Burke. So it throws one of these nexuses right into the middle of that uh, corner of the board. And Burke takes how much damage? D6 damage from the electrical storm. Okay, that's that's pretty bad. So it's four. Four damage to Burke. He's saving on a five plus. No, that's not gonna do it. So he's wounded. And his shock roll is a nine which means crawl, so he can make a free move. So you know what? He goes down, but he's gonna make a move to, I mean, we want to kill this thing. Just remind me, how do I kill these nexuses again? Yeah, you can just shoot them. Um, I actually think I want to put myself here like right in contact with it. I will explain why when we get to it. Um, but at least he's not dead and that Nexus is now available for targeting. So let's get rid of all our exhaustion tokens. My least favorite bit of every uh, tabletop sim playtest I do of this game is seeking out these little blue lozenges and uh, eradicating them right okay cool so i'm going to speed things up for the second round because i'm aware that it's um we've been playing for about 45 minutes and it's turn one round one rather so i'm going to do less explaining from now on we're going to smash through it 
So it's um, it's our choice as to who goes first. I think we want to get our judge up here and we want to clear out these so we can at least achieve some part of our objective. Um, these two are kind of in trouble when the tyrant activates, but it, it's, it's a little while yet before that happens. So let's let's get Berix up here. So he is going to move up to the top and you know, I, I, the move isn't going to cover engaging with one of these but he is going to now try and move into contact with this stalker here. So he needs a three plus. He makes it. And then he's going to swing the hammer. He needs a three plus to hit. Two damage. The shadow is saving on a five plus. Doesn't make it. The shock roll is 10, which means last gasp which means they perform a free action as they go down so it's going to lash out with its uh, four plus attack as it goes down and that's a miss now that's pretty close to the edge i would say do we think so this thing does need to make a roll to avoid falling that's four plus he makes it i mean i was being a little bit cheeky i think so he's moved twice, attacked once, but this turn he has, he can use his ability. So his condemn ability. At the end of your turn, target an enemy that you can see. All readied allies that can make a free attack on them. So this is great if you can see an enemy that the rest of your warband are like lined up against. And he can just like point at them and they all make a free attack, which can be devastating. Um, but at the moment, I think our best bet is this one and just to have Sefi knock this thing down. Um, so Sefi's gonna roll, that's a four plus with a reroll. That's a hit, four plus to save. It makes both its saves, unfortunately. Worth a go though, wasn't it? But that was a free action, so Sefi isn't yet done. Okay, um, now for which, which of these to activate? So we don't want this guy to go because he's going to jump up here and then shoot at Burke, which is going to be bad. Because if you're down and you get shot, then it's it's game over, basically. Likewise, this enforcer here is not good. And this, you know, I said that the steel tyrant was like not going to be a problem. He actually might be a bit of a problem. Um, I think we're just going to have to accept that our chronicle is in for a bad day. So this enforcer is going to shoot down at our chronicle. So three shots, five plus with a reroll. No hits. One hit. Our chronicle saves on a five plus only. Oh, thank you. So the enforcer has fritted away their turn. So that takes a bit of the pressure off our chronicle. Now I want to get up and attack this nexus because I don't want this enforcer to get me. So Burke needs to roll a five plus to recover, but because they're tough, they get a reroll. Mm. Ah! Oh. So this is why it's good to keep your <laughs> keep your units together because being able to like help each other up and give give them that plus one, it's so much better than. Even this tough guy trying to get up on their own, it can be it can be difficult. So at the moment, Burke is doing nothing because if you fail to recover, that's it. Uh, Arcbrick says, love a game where people can get thrown over ledges. That was basically like the number one requirement. I think like the first weapon that I designed for this game was like this gravity gun that would like push or pull enemy units. And it was like, it was already like loads of fun. It doesn't doesn't need many rules. It's, it's not about synergies. It's just like a cool miniature thing. Right. So that was Burke. Who am I going to activate? Well, you know what? This Burke's already like in trouble. So we might as well just embrace it and activate this enforcer. So the enforcer is going to move up to there, and then he's going to shoot at Burke. Now you don't get plus one 
for shooting at a down target. You only get plus one for fighting a down target in melee. So five plus with a reroll. Oh, that, that reroll stings so badly. Burke is needs a five plus to save. No. So if you're wounded when you're already down, it's game over for you and you are out. So yeah, Burke. I'm sorry. You made a good effort of it. Right, back to our guys. So we've used our leader. Let's let's try and at least get this. So if we were playing in a campaign mode, um, this is where it gets a bit weird because it's kind of like semi-co-op. So if you were playing with two warbands, you both want to destroy the nexuses and kill the horror. That's like a shared objective. And depending on whether you destroy one nexus or all of them or destroy all of them and the horror, you will get more renown so you can spend more points in the campaign. And it doesn't matter who kills the horror. If you're at the battle where the horror is killed, you get some renown for it. So it's like a shared growth thing. But the the objective in this case of lighting the beacon, that is like whoever does it gets the gets the point, and that's it's it's a slightly different it's like a separate tracker. This is more about like achieving your long term campaign objective. You don't get any extra like resources. You get some extra options, but you don't get like outright more points for doing this. But it's you know we want to do it, so let's see what we can do. Sefi is going to attack this shadow stalker. So, four plus with a reroll. Great, two damage. The Shadow Stalker is saving on a four plus. Sefi will use their second action to attack again. Four plus with a reroll, with a reroll. Thank you. Four plus save. So one point of damage gets through, so they're wounded. So let's see what the shock roll is. Oh, if you get doubles on the shock, it's like an instant kill, but we haven't had one yet. So it's crawl. So they would make a free move, but the only thing they want to do is stay in contact with us. So they're not going to move anywhere. So we've done fight, fight. We could, we could move, but there's not really much point. I guess we could move towards this. Yeah. Okay. You know what we are. We're going to move over here next to this one. No, you know it, it doesn't make any sense. We're gonna we're gonna stay over here. So we're exhausted. Um, right, we might as well activate one of these because they're gonna they're gonna try at some point. So this shadow stalker here, they need a four plus to recover. No. So that's their turn gone. Right, what's what are these two up to? Ah. So, this is good because Mr. Smile has the Storm Rifle, which rolls twice as many shots if you have not moved this turn and you are readied. So, readied means not exhausted. So, he's he's he fills all the requirements to be able to do that. So, he's going to shoot at this Enforcer over here. And he's going to roll two shots instead of one. And he needs a four plus to hit. It would be nice to hit twice once that that's fine so each shot does two damage and this enforcer is saving on a five plus not enough so let's roll for some shock oh, I'm so close huh so they go down And let's see if they fall, first of all. So five plus, they they, they fail their roll, so that means they're gonna fall, and they're gonna take two damage from the fall. We'll put them down here, their nearest ledge. Two damage from the fall, can he save on both of them? He can save on both of them, wow. That's annoying, I was really hoping <laughs> that would be a kill. Um, Now, an ally you can see gets a free move. So it, it's only this thing. It's going to have to be this, isn't it? 
So this thing is spurred on. So the steel tyrant is going to jump up there. Which is kind of horrible. That's quite scary because now he's right in the firing line of these two. Um, Mr. Smile would like to get out of here, I think. So where can we get to realistically? I mean, it would take two moves to get like behind here, I think. What about behind here? So we're at least in some cover. I think I think we want to try and run down here, which we can do because it's our first move. And then for our second move, we could just try and run to like here. So yeah, four plus. He makes it. So he runs to like here. So he's cowardly hiding behind the pillar. I don't know, is he even I think that's out of sight. Yeah, that's 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 a bit much. So he's now exhausted. So now we can activate uh, an enemy. Let's do this other Shadow Stalker here. So they need to roll a four plus to recover. Beautiful. That's exactly what we wanted. So everyone up here is gone now. Oh, hang on. Am I missing something obvious? Ah, so at the end of a round, if only one warband has standing units touching the beacon, then it is lit. So unless somebody climbs up here, we are the only warband that has standing units up here. So we will light the beacon, so which means we'll have achieved the objective. So that's good. Um, so now it's us. Let's let's go for a bit of a hail mary, Daruska. No, 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 no. Actually, let's not. Let's not. There's no. There's no rush to use Daruska. Uh, we want Corvus out of the way if we can. So another play could be if we charged in with Corvus against the tyrant. The tyrant doesn't actually have a melee weapon. Um, what's the wording? Let, let me see if I can like game the system here. So I know you, obviously you can't shoot when you're engaged in melee. But how is it phrased? Do I need to tighten this up? You cannot shoot if you are touching a standing enemy. So if we engage him, he might just knock us down and then shoot someone else. Um, You know, I, th I think we, I think we need to do it. He's a zealot. We need to be bold. He's going to move and attack the tyrant. So one, and then he's going to attack. His axe is two, two times one, and he's hitting on a five plus with a reroll. With a reroll. Okay. So he misses with his first attack, and then he can attack again. Five plus with a reroll, beautiful. And the tyrant is tough, so he's three plus with a reroll to save. Yeah, it, it wasn't really much of a danger, was it? But at least he's he's tried to prove that this thing can bleed, even if it apparently can't. And now we're going to activate the the tyrant. So he's going to attack Corvus, but he doesn't have a melee weapon, so it's just like a one times one weapon. So he's going to kick at him, three plus to hit. That's a hit. Corvus saves on a five plus. He doesn't save. We roll for shock. I think we all know where this is going. Oh, it's a nine. Crawl, make a free move. So he's gonna go down, but he can make a free move. I'm gonna move down here. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and get down. <laughs> um, so he has two actions left. Corvus is still the nearest enemy. So I think he's going to like 
jump down here and then he's going to blast Corvus, unfortunately. So it's a 3 plus to hit. Oh no, don't roll those. That's a hit. Uh, 3 damage to Corvus, who needs to roll a 5 plus on his saves. No, he's dead. Now, this lightning, chain lightning thing would fire out from him to another unit, but there, there's no other enemies that he can see. We've, we've deliberately kind of spread out, which has been really bad for, like, our recovery. But it's been good in the sense that we've not just been, like, chain lightning to death on turn one. Um, so that'll do for him. We're using up a lot of these, aren't we? Let's make it rain. Okay. I think that is everyone. So, get rid of our exhaustion tokens. And let's roll for the end of round events. Three. The tyrant throws a nexus to the ground, blasting any, any enemies that it can see. So he's just like killed Corvus and then he like spikes one of these nexuses into the ground. Um, I don't think this nexus can see Mr. Smile. I mean, technically it's thrown it like at its feet. I don't know, it probably can actually, can't it? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll say it can. So it's going to fire at Mr. It's to smile, but it's going to get minus one for being in cover. So what was it exactly? It's a one times three attack at five plus. So it needs a six to hit. So what are the odds of that? Obviously, 100%. So three damage to Mr. Smile. Who doesn't manage to make his saves. And we roll for shock. Seven, which is no further damage. So Mr. Smile is down again. But he survived. Oh yeah, actually, we should probably roll to see if he does fall. It's it's not looking good. He needs to roll a four plus to avoid falling. He does not. He's going to take d6 damage. Six. This is not what I wanted to happen. Four plus on his saves. He doesn't make them all. So Mr. Smile is dead from concussion from that fall. Great. Cool. So we've lost three of our six units. Bear with me. <coughs> Sorry, that was a, a, a morning, a sneeze of morning for our warband because we've lost half our warband, which means we can choose to withdraw now. Um, I don't think we should because we, we want to at least try and take out some of these nexuses because the way these scenarios are set up is that they're deliberately very hard for the most part. I think the introductory one is quite straightforward. But I've tried to make them hard so that you might well not complete it on the first attempt. But it's quick enough that you might want to try again. And obviously you get like a partial success for doing the side objective and even just destroying some of the nexuses. But what we will do is we light the beacon, which means we can now ignore that whole darkness effect, which to be honest wasn't massively impactful. So I might rethink that. Um, oh, did I miss like two whole units? I did. I, I just missed our Chronicle. So can she stand up with a five plus? No, so nothing would have happened anyway. Okay, new round. We've achieved this objective. So we don't care about these Shadow Stalkers now. So I think we need to get get these nexuses, at least get one of them destroyed. Uh, we don't have any missile attacks now, which is a little bit uh, a little bit bad. Um, who are we going to activate? So, Sefi, you're going to go over towards this nexus. I know it's going to take us a little bit to get there, but we'll get there. So we said these were climbable, so it's going to be one. Oh, no. 
not quite. <laughs> oh, this map. Why do I do it to myself? So one was to move kind of over here. And then two to get down to there. And we can see our leader. So they just need a three, uh, four plus. No, three plus. Sorry. So they are four plus. They get plus one from the leader. So three plus to move down to here. You, you know what? Just... I apologize if you've watched me play on this map before and you're like, why is he doing this to us again? And then I'm going to try and move through to like here to get behind this thing. So if I can roll a four plus, if I can roll a four plus, I'm going to pretend that I rolled a four plus just because I can't be bothered to stack them there. So we're going to completely brazenly cheat to put Sefi there because it's not a great place to be but we need to get towards this nexus so Sefi has acted now we're going to activate um, I mean we might as well activate the tyrant because they can't see anyone they can't see our leader through all this mess and they're going to actually move towards the risk but they can't really get there in one go so I think the best move for them is probably like one and then like a sort of leap down to here if they can roll a three plus yep so like two and then they're going to try and like hop up here to get a vantage point, I guess, which will be a three plus. So you do have these situations with the horrors where you have to be like, by the book, they would like move directly towards their target, but it means they often get like gummed up in the terrain a bit. So I think sometimes you have to just apply a bit of common sense and he's only got one Nexus with him now at least. So, he's exhausted, which is good. Um, let's get Daruska up. They need a 5+. plus. Oh, no. It's not looking good for our Chronicle. And we didn't even get to use this... No, we did get to use the Chronicle ability once, but we, we, we haven't managed to make much use out of it. So. We only have one unit left to move. I mean, we should go and get this Nexus. It's like... It's just waiting for us. So. I guess it's like one move, two move, three moves. So, one move to get to here. Okay, well, I'm not going to do it yet, but one, one move to get to there. And then we need to roll a three plus for the second move. That's a two. A three plus to move again. Uh, it, oh, I'm sorry, are you, are you not in a rush here, Berics? Berics failed two move rolls, which means they're going to... No, don't go down there. You know, we'll go there, but we know that we are on the edge. Oh no, right, well let's see if either of these get up. So this Shadow Stalker here will get up. They will move towards Berics and they will attack. So four plus to hit. No. That's all our units gone. So now we're just activating the unbound units, aren't we? So let's see if this guy gets up. Four plus. No. Will this guy over here get up? Five plus. Yes. And they do... Do they have line of sight? Well, it doesn't really matter because they, they could move to, to get line of sight and they're going to shoot at Daruska. So... Five plus to hit with a reroll. That's one hit. Daruska saves on a five plus. 
she makes it, which is fine. I would like to destroy one Nexus, I think, is my realistic goal. If we can, we've lit the beacon, so if we can light the beacon and destroy a Nexus, we're at least going home with something. Um, and we've got this one over here. So they're going to shoot at Sefi, but Sefi has taken cover, so it's a 6 plus to hit with a reroll. These rerolls. Uh, Sefi saving on a 4 plus, come on. Beautiful. I believe that is everyone. Yeah, so let's get rid of our exhaustion tokens and then we will do our final um, our final event roll because after this the tyrant won't have any nexuses left. One. The tyrant pilots the nexus into the nearest enemy, visible or not. They take d6 damage and it lands at their feet. So he like sends it out to just smash into Daruska, I guess. And Daruska is going to take d6 damage. Yeah, of course. Five plus on all of these is what's needed. I mean, that's pretty good. <laughs> but it's not good enough. So, Daruska, I'm sorry. I mean, for a two-point non-combatant unit, it took a hell of a beating. But all the Nexus are now out, at least. So, we only have two units left. Um, what can we do? Let's try and destroy one of these Nexuses. So, again, the rule of thumb is to be generous with, like, short moves but strict with long moves. So if I was like here and saying, can I move to here? Because it's like technically a straight line and it's like a kind of weird ultra precise line, then say no. But if it's like, can I go from here to here? Then you might say yes. So I think we're gonna say that is a one move move and we're gonna chop this Nexus. So four plus to hit it with a reroll. Two damage. It's saving on a 5 plus. It's gone. So we destroyed a Nexus. Okay, I forgot about this. <laughs> so whenever you destroy a Nexus, there's an effect. And this is like another way of differentiating all these horrors. Because some horrors will like get weaker as you destroy their Nexuses. Some of them will like summon help. Some of them will just behave in weird ways. But... This guy, like, for the first two Nexuses, um, it kind of, like, weaponizes the other Nexuses, which is bad. So any other deployed Nexuses each shoot the Tyrant's Chain Lightning from their location. Uh, so where are the other two Nexuses? So one of them is here, so that, that can't shoot Lightning at anyone. And, I mean, the good thing about everyone being dead is that we don't have many targets, so we're not affected by that, actually. So that's not too bad. So that was one move, two to attack, and then we're going to try and make another move into this guy. Four plus, no. Never mind. And then we might as well activate this guy to see what happens. So, five plus with a reroll. Oh no, what am I saying? No, that was last turn. Ignore me. I thought he'd already gone. So he needs five plus to hit Sefi. Of course, they all hit. Yeah, obviously. Sefi needs to roll a 4 plus on all of these saves. Not quite. So let's roll for shock. 7 means no further effect, so he's just down. And these enforcers are kind of weak because... Um, yeah, they, they have this kind of slightly weak effect on their gun. And they won't move. It's like, they're, even though he could like run in and finish Sefi off with like a, a knife attack, they won't do that. They're, they're enforcers. They just want to keep 
keep their badges clean. Um, so we, we have to do our leader. Can we get to either of these nexus? Well, we don't want to go for this one, but can we get to that one? So we're going to do one move to get down here, but we need to roll for it because we're now engaged in melee. So it needs a three plus. Let's try again. Rolls a three. Needs to get a three plus. Okay. Oh, come on, stand there. Right. Okay. L listen. You're not setting a good example here as a leader. Let's let's focus here. <laughs> I think we need to uh, we need to maybe take this as a sign. Um, we, we're just gonna we're just gonna drop in where we can for now. There we go. Right, don't move in. Um, so that was our second move and then for our third move we're going to try and run across to like here I guess I guess like um, has the tyrant gone yet no I guess to here so he needs a three plus Yeah, so we're out of sight of the this guy. Right. Yeah, Arc Arcbrick says um, Daruska had a hard life. Yeah, definitely. Now it's about to get worse over here. So the Steel Tyrant. The nearest enemy is my leader. Well, it's the only enemy left. So he's going to move like. I guess one to here and then two would be to leap up here and then he would have line of sight so that's three plus and yeah he's gonna take a shot three plus to hit no I, I was really hoping this would be a miss three damage on our leader he's got a three plus save you know, what's he got to worry about nothing he's fine but I don't like being in line of sight of the of the horror whenever I can help it. Um, th these guys up here, they're, they're just straight up like not going to leave this area now. So I will activate one of them. Let's activate this one that's down. See if they get back up. No. And then we'll do the next one. Who does nothing? I don't really need to worry about exhaustion tokens with these because we're, we're basically done now. The enforcer here is going to move towards my leader. I guess he's going to go like one and then two. Try to get up there. Five plus. Try again. That's not a proper roll. Five plus. So, you know, he's, he's up there. Now, the steel tyrant. I haven't written this in the rules. I need to add this in, but um there's no mention of what happens if they don't have any nexuses left to like launch um but yeah that the intent was that there's a note in here that there's no there's no event once he's thrown all three of them um or i might i might rethink that i might add an extra like little event table for this guy but for now he's going to do nothing for the uh for the extra event now it's the final I'm gonna say that I am withdrawing which means there's one more turn and then we will withdraw because we at least our leader will get away you know unscathed but we will have one last chance to destroy one of these nexuses to be honest it doesn't matter too much because destroying two isn't really any better than destroying one you get you get renowned for destroying one and renowned for destroying the third one and renowned for destroying the horror but just destroying this one isn't going to do much. So we're just doing out of spite now. So that's an easy move. And then we're going to strike this thing. Three plus to hit. No, we're going <laughs> to... Really? We're going to try again with our second attack. Three plus to hit. Great. Two damage. That thing saves on a five plus. It is destroyed. 
Now what happens when the second um, nexus is destroyed? The final remaining nexus, deployed or not, fires a lightning blast at every enemy it can see. He cannot see me, so it's fine. To be honest, I don't know, do we want to withdraw? Because we could potentially get to this. Next turn, you know what, we're not withdrawing. We're seeing this through. I mean, we might just get wiped out. There's a good chance, but we're, we're going to stick with it. So, we're, we're going to forget about these two up here because they're no longer really relevant. In fact, I might just remove them from the board. Because we're not going back up there and they're not going to come down after us. So, the tyrant... He's going to move so he can shoot us. He's going to shoot at us with three plus to hit. Three plus save. No. Let's do the shock roll. Five. Thrown. Move directly away from the attacker. I guess that's down here. That's not like a bad drop at least oh, well there and he's down so this 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 does scupper our plans somewhat so he's now exhausted and then this enforcer is going to move to here and take a shot at us five plus with a reroll that was not a roll that was a flip sorry but what does it matter? Because they're obviously all going to hit. Three plus saves. He makes it. So he's not dead. Which is good. So that's... I'm not going to worry about these tokens. Because it's just these three units now are all that matters. I think. Oh, there's this guy over here. But you know what? Oh. Did I, like, forget that Safi wasn't dead? Right, Sefi, you're not dead. How, how, I'm so sorry for forgetting about you. Um, so we will activate. Well, no, we haven't. We haven't done either of these. So I've 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 messed up the order. But let's keep going. So Sefi, four plus to get up, please. No, of course not. Um, this guy is shooting at Sefi. <laughs> Five plus with a reroll. Oh, that's one hit. Sefi saving on a four plus. No, well now they're dead. Great, that was that was really worthwhile. So new turn. Three plus to get up. So that's one action. Um we're gonna try and move to here, which will be three plus. And then we're gonna try and run. Where can we plausibly run to? I guess like here? If we have our 3 plus? No. <laughs> We're doomed to just keep getting blasted down by this guy, so let's do the tyrant. Uh, no, you know what, let's do the enforcer first because it might actually be slightly beneficial to us. 5 plus to hit with a reroll. That's three hits. That that reroll is so good on five plus with lots of shots. I have like run the numbers and I know it's not um, not much better than like a plus one, but it's it is just really good. Um. So three hits. I need three plus to save. No. What's the shock? We haven't had a double yet. There it is. Had to say it, didn't I? So I would get a free attack against my attacker, but I can't. Because I'm not. Because uh, I haven't got a ranged weapon and he's dead. So let's look at the state of things. We destroyed two nexuses, which means we would get one extra renown because we destroyed. Let me let me get the sheet. So basically you get you get one point for each of the following at least one nexus was destroyed yeah all nexuses were destroyed no and the horror was defeated no so we just get one renown 
Um, the warband that killed the horror can now purchase items from the horrors reward list, which is things like, so for the Steel Tyrant, you can get like the lightning gun that the horror was using. You can get the flash gun that the uh, enforcers were using and you can get the weaponized power core, um, which is like a one use thing. So these rewards are like ways to have like horizontal growth. So you still have to pay for them out of your resources. Although there's no price on this weaponized core. So there's still lots of little fixes that need doing. Um, so it, it's ways to have horizontal growth so that the more you succeed um, over the other player in the campaign, you're going to get more options if you win more games, but you're still going to grow at the same sort of rate. Um, so we didn't kill the tyrants, so we can't buy from there. But we did light the beacon, which means we can now purchase items from here. Uh, such as this bright pendant, which seems ridiculous. Shoot at QL2 plus when firing at the nearest visible enemy. Two points. So you get like some cool items that you can buy if you if you if you complete the objective. And we did get one renown. So we're now to renown twenty one. And then for the next battle, you would effectively rebuild this warband however you wanted. Um, it's it's a lot less punishing now than it was for like death. Which reminds me, we should roll for our casualties because it's always fun. So it's a lot less punishing for death now. The worst that's going to happen is if if a unit actually dies. So say, well, let's let's roll, and um, I'll tell you what happens for each of these results. So I'm going to assign a die to each of the people that died, who is everyone. And I should say it's not advisable to have your whole warband die probably should have like withdrew withdrawn at some point so a roll of one means they are dead however all that means is Daruska is dead and Corvus is dead but I'm a realist and I know that you might want to rebuild your warband using these miniatures again so you can bring the same miniature back as the same unit with a different name in one battle's time so effectively it's like they're out for a battle um there's a few other little tweaks as well like there's certain upgrades that you can only give to units that have survived the battle so they might come back less experienced but you don't lose points out of your warband you just lose options so we can't use those two miniatures in the next game because they are dead um which is bad because I, I was enjoying having that chronicle um our judge missing in action so in the next game they will deploy they will be deployed by the enemy somewhere on the board out of sight so they're going to start right in the middle of danger which is not great uh sefi lost so if we use them again they don't come on until the second round and they come on from a random board edge Is that right a random table edge at the start of the second round which is actually kind of good especially for sefi because he can run on you know when we've forgotten about him he can run on and uh spear someone in the back um these two both just get cool scars so they're they're good so you know we'd have some options next time we rebuild this warband we could take on the same horror we can use some of the cool items we got from this beacon scene so um, the bright pendant is pretty good. It might, it's probably too good because it lets you fire at QL2+, plus, which could be cool for this Mr. Smile perhaps, or, you know, even Burke because that's a big improvement for them. Um, so we could just spend more points on these few models or we could get like, get like a new miniature in. It's a lot more flexible now. The idea is that, you know, your leader is the center point of your campaign and um they're kind of they've got like a sort of rotating cast of like mercenaries and followers and like a roster that they're kind of drawing from and it all comes down to miniatures because i want this to be a game that inspires you to kit bash miniatures together to use the miniatures that you've got and if you've you know if you've just kit bash something cool together i don't want you to have to think oh am i gonna have to start like a new warband to use this miniature you can just plug it into your existing warband and like 
if, if it doesn't work out, you don't have to use them in the next game. It's, it's a lot more flexible now. So that is, um, that is the state of Brimlight at the moment. Um, so thank you for watching. I hope that has been enjoyable. Um, if you are interested in trying Grimlight, if you go to bastionand.com, there will be a link there to Grimlight. Be aware it's always changing. So if you're watching this, even in a few days time, I'll probably change something about the document. Um, if you are enjoying these videos um, and you want to support me on Patreon, you can go to patreon.com forward slash bastionland. Um, this video will be going onto the YouTube channel in a couple of days and that's youtube.com slash bastionand um next week i'm going to be doing something different something potentially rpg based potentially using 2d12 which i can talk about a bit next week um until then if you do make any miniatures for grimlight do come to the discord server and um show them to us or tag me on twitter at bastionland because again this is all about wanting to like make some cool miniatures and play them without having to have a long complicated game so uh thank you and bear with me all of my all of my screen my um shortcuts are, are acting up because i have tabletop sim open at the same time but i can now say thank you and 